SRBPS virtual classrooms. Students, I am Arshna Jha, your teacher to teach you English. If we want to have social justice in our society, then we must bridge the gap between haves and have nots. With this note only, we will start our today's class. So, today we will do our second poem in Flamingo, an elementary school classroom in a slum, which is written by Stephen Spender. Poet Stephen Spender was an English poet and an essayist too. He was a college dropout as he left University College Oxford without taking a degree and went to Berlin in 1930. Right? He was having interest in politics also and he was socialist and pacifist. After two world war, he was affected a lot. Right? He wrote many books, poems of dedication, uh, the edge of being, the creative element, the struggle of the modern. In his poem, An Elementary School Classroom in a Slum, he has concentrated on the theme of social injustice and class inequalities. He knew that uh, slum was the byproduct of urbanization and industrialization. He wanted to do something for their upliftment. And through this poem, he tried to approach both the world, this world of the slum children and that of those elite people who could do something and who could contribute there. That gives this poem a universal approach. Okay, students, tell me, the moment the classroom world comes to you, what figures and what things, what elements comes to your mind? Definitely, students, yes. But must be the infrastructure also in the mind there. There must be some infrastructures, right? Okay. Study material, yes. And curriculum. Yes, all these together makes a classroom active. And above all, the uh, synchronization of all these is required to run a classroom in a right pace. The interest of the students can be generated with the help of study material. If that curriculum is somewhere connected with their practical life and of course infrastructure also plays a role. Let's see in case of these slum children whether these points were being taken care of or not. Because everyone feels that education only can uh, help them to come out of their situation. But what kind of education? So let's see through this poem that what kind of education they are getting, right? Can you see this picture? Is it the same which you imagined when you thought for a, a classroom? Of course not. Many of us are blessed that we are in the better situation like this than this. Yes, these students are forced to be in this condition. Even on the name of education, the things are not being provided to them. Keep this picture in mind. You will get to know that what Stephen has picturized through his words. So, welcome to an elementary school classroom in a slum. So, here is the picturization, word picture rather you can say, which Stephen Spender presents before us. Far, far from gusty waves, these children's faces like rootless weeds and hair torn round their pallor. The tall girl with her weight down head, the paper seeming boy with rat's eyes, the stunted unlucky hire of twisted bones reciting a father's granal disease. His lesson from his desk at back of the dim class, one unnoted, sweet and young, his eyes live in a dream of squirrel's game in tree room other than this. Now this is all about the students sitting in that room. They are very, very far, uh, far away from all the changes that is going on in the worldwide. And their face, which is pale due to malnutrition, is compared with rootless weeds. Rootless weeds now uprooted. And see, they are compared with weeds, unwanted plants, right? A tall girl with her weight down head. You may find a girl there 
who might who is having uh, has uh, head bent due to burden burden of responsibilities burden of being eldest one among them due to discrimination of the age in that uh, class or you may find a boy who is so thin that even he seems as if he is made up of paper and his eyes are also watery reddish and it seems that his eyes is being compared with rat's eyes which is always in search of food always scared or you may find a boy who is having a stunted growth of his uh, bones because unluckily he inherited the disease from his father and he couldn't grow right and see these all children are learning the same lessons which their parents read and we all know that uh, that lesson couldn't bring any change in their parents life but still they are forced to go for the same curriculum that means there is no change in their syllabus too same teaching is being given to them or you may find a boy who might be sitting at the last unnoticed not interested at all in that class because of that gloom look and that's and he is somewhere wandering in his dreams in uh, to play outside like squirrels uh, or to be in, uh, to enjoy the games in the lap of the nature that is all which right the poet has explained through these words let's go for a literary work that he has used here and how he has tried to depict that thing right? he here you can see that far far from gusty waves gusty waves represents that uh, lots of changes are going on you can take it like open areas like big sea where they are, they are not uh, allowed to go they are deprived of that net nature also they are very very far away from those things which figure of speech is used here can you guess i hope all of you can guess yes repetition now this repetition we all know that helps us to uh, stress upon the point so the distance writer is trying to emphasize emphasize on that distance that how far they are away from these kind of advancement the changes that is going on around the world in the second line right now poet has compared their pale face pallor right you can see here the word pallor pallor is given here so this pallor their pale face is compared with rootless weeds comparison which figure of speech is used there simile right because without nutrition because of malnutrition these kids are also man looking pale and uh, even the weeds the unwanted plant when they are uprooted they also look pale now we can find a tall girl with a weight down head that i already i explained to you so it might be a burden of responsibilities because at early age only the girls in these families they are burdened with the responsibilities or she might be a sufferer or victim of uh, malnutrition and that's why mentally not grown or it might be an embarrassment of being a part of that room or that class where all other students are of a uh, very small age or they are younger to her so she might be embarrassed so reason might be any but you will find such faces there the paper seeming boy again which figure of speech is used here it is yes guess metaphor right the paper seeming boy and with red size both the phrase are uh, here example of metaphors paper seeming boy is the boy is the thinness of the boy the weakness the weak body of that boy is compared with that of paper he is so weak that he can be called as if he is made up of paper now red size as i told you that uh, disease rise due to unhygienic condition or the scary eyes the eyes which are not steady and always in search of food the hunger could be seen in their uh, in their eyes so that those eyes are being compared with rat eyes so again metaphor is used here i hope you have understood this figure of speech right we can or of speech in the same stanza so he inherited his father's grenal disease right he inherited 
his father's genital disease so his weak body is being compared with the disease of his father it seems as if he has inherited it from his father genital that bone related disease where the growth of bone stops or the other one is here the last line we find that a very small child is sitting at the last and he might be dreaming about something outside that room because that room was uninteresting it was not having any interesting thing for him so he wanted to enjoy outside so these two are also examples of metaphor see here squirrel game is a metaphor as a squirrel enjoys playing freely in the garden outside and across the lawn climbs up the trees and hides in the holes same way that small boy was interested in going out and playing game in the lap of nature and even tree room also is uh, uh, an example of metaphor at it's an hiding place or a place where one can enjoy so even in the boy's imagination it is full, full of fun and is uh, something which attracts him more than the gloomy classroom where he was sitting right so that way it, these are examples of metaphor hope you have understood the first stanza what we learned here that students are sitting the poet is describing about students and they are being compared with rootless weeds because of their pale face yes and uh, even they are being compared with a paper seeming boy it seems that as if they are made of of paper their eyes their diseased eyes are compared with rat size and they are being called unlucky hair because they inherit what their parents might be uh, the weakness that their parents might be having due to disease and even they repeat their uh, the same lesson they are so unlucky that they, even the curriculum is not changed for them so academically also even the uh, education part also is not updated so this is all we learned about today students we have completed the explanation of our first stanza of this poem we'll continue with the rest of the stanza uh, in our coming class so till then do your homework which i have shared or with you in dropbox and uh, we'll be doing the next stanzas later on so have a nice time good day thank you